Hello, my name is Kurt Wise. I have got a PhD in paleontology. Uh, I studied geology and biology. The issue I want to address is the issue of radiometric dating. It seems to be one that concerns people uh, and that happen to believe that the Earth is young. <clears throat> and uh, so the issue is that there, uh, there are a number of elements in the universe, a number of atoms in the universe that are unstable. We don't even know why, but there's a bunch of them. Uh, scores of atoms that release particles. Uh, the particles uh, create what we call radiation when they degenerate. When one atom uh, uh, throws off a particle, it changes into a different type of atom. And so it changes from what we call a parent atom to a daughter atom in the process. And that process is called radioact radioactive decay, or just decay. <clears throat> if you have an individual atom, there's no way of predicting when that individual atom will in fact decay. But if you have a whole bunch of them, I mean bunches of them, billions and billions of them, the group as a whole tends to behave in a very constant, regular way. Namely, that a certain percentage of the atoms will decay in a certain given period of time. For example, you might have, uh, let's say, you watch a particular group of parent atoms, and over, let's say, 100 years, 3% of the atoms will decay to their daughter. If you wait that same period of time again, 3% of the remaining will have decayed, and so on. So there's a consistent percentage of the atom, uh, the number of atoms that decay in this process. It is so regular that we can use this to actually date things, to determine the age of things. Let's say we determine for a particular element that, uh, the, that half of it decays in 50 years. And let's say we s pick up something that's got uh, an equal amount of parent and daughter elements in it. That would suggest that they started out with all the parent and one, uh, 50% of it decayed uh, and so now you have the same amount of parent as daughter and so a half-life has elapsed. Uh, we can use then if we find a quarter of it is uh, the, the parent and three-quarter is daughter, we know that two half-lives have elapsed and so on. And again, this is a very regular pattern. If we have enough atoms that, uh, that we can use this to determine the age of things rather precisely. Now, I might, I might add that We've, been, we've watched this sort of thing in the laboratory. We've watched uh, atoms decay in the laboratory. We've even tried to change the decay rate. And we can do that, but under conditions that are so crazy, are such high temperature or pressure or something else, that the, that kind of thing doesn't usually work, happen in the real world. So for the most part, a particular atom has a decay rate that is constant in the modern world. So if we assume that that's always been the case, we can use that to date things that we encounter in the world about us. And that is why people pick up some rocks and they, they see some atoms in there that uh, are radioactive. They have a very, very long half-life, millions of years. By looking at the amount of parent and the amount of daughter, they determine the rocks are millions of years old. As a matter of fact, if you ever hear that a particular rock or a fossil is tens of millions, hundreds of millions, or even billions of years old, it is almost certainly due to radiometric dating that they come to that conclusion. And the fact that this, the decay rate can't be changed in the laboratory, that it is constant in the, in the modern world, really does suggest that those things are millions or billions of years old. Now, I might also add that some people might say, well, what if God created something with radioactive age already in it? It looks like it is, um, it's 10 million years old. Would that explain the data? Well, we have some rocks that we are fairly certain formed during the flood. For example, we think that, uh, that fossils of animals were formed in the flood. They weren't created by God because that would be evidence of death and we don't believe God created 
evidence of death. We don't create, and we don't believe God created fossils. So the fossils would have to date from the flood or at least after the creation. We've actually got some rocks, some lava uh, rocks, for example, that have killed animals that have um, uh, incorporated fossils within the lava. That would suggest that those rocks are uh, dating after the creation, after the entrance of sin uh, and death into the world. And those rocks contain evidence of radioactive decay, a lot of evidence of radioactive decay, parent-daughter ratios that suggest that the rocks are tens or hundreds of millions of years old. Also, in addition to that, we even have radiation damage inside rocks that we believe are formed after the flood and during the flood that indicates that a lot of radioactive decay Millions of years at current rates occurred sometime in the past. All of these sorts of things suggest that rocks really are millions of years old. At least that seems to be an easy uh, way to explain the data. However, we've also got evidence that the same rocks that show tens of millions of years of radioactive decay show evidence of actual youth. Uh, for example, we've got um, Pleochroic halos, which are radiation damage in rocks that indicate that a whole lot of radioactive decay has occurred in those rocks, a billion years of radioactive decay. Yet the same halos suggest that there was water running through the rock, moving polonium from one place to another, producing polonium radioactive halos that uh, must have occurred not, must have, must have moved not in millions or billions of years, but in only less than two years of time. So we've got evidence in some rocks of hundreds of millions of years or billions of years of decay in things we know are only thousands of years old, other evidences of 100 million years worth of decay that occurred in less than two years. So we've got some evidence inside the rocks that indicate that the rocks are old. We've got other evidence that indicates the rocks are young. The Bible itself suggests that the whole earth must be young, only 6,000 years or something like that. The flood only about 4,500 years ago. So we have rocks we believed were formed in the flood that are dating at a half a billion years. So that would suggest that a half billion years of radioactive decay has occurred since the flood but the flood's only 4,500 years ago. So we've got both evidences for youth and evidences for antiquity. So what it comes down to is we believe there was a point in Earth history, or maybe more than one point in Earth history, where radioactive decay rates were much greater than they are today. That this would explain why we've got stuff from the flood that's only 4,500 years old, but where there's been a half billion years worth of decay. Because during the flood, when God was judging the Earth, for some reason, radioactive decay rates were much, much faster than they are today. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting something light here, because as far as we know, the laws of physics, as they stand right now, mean that decay rates uh, have always been what they are today. So what I'm suggesting is that during the flood, the laws of physics were changed. If we're right about this, and I think we are, then the large amount of radioactive decay that occurred in young rocks suggests that during the flood, God changed the rules of the universe. God changed the uh, constants of the universe in such a way that uh, radioactive decay occurred very rapidly during the flood. It may even be part of how he judged the earth by a flood. We're not we don't have all the answers as why the flood occurred uh, and all of that, but it might relate to this issue of uh, the changing laws of the universe. So we, <clears throat> we conclude from this that uh, radioactive decay by itself would seem to be evidence for an old earth. But when you look at it in the light of the claims of scripture, there's reason to believe that the decay rates have not been constant and that there is a God that has been interfering in the, the, the history of the universe, specifically when he judges human sin, perhaps when he created things initially. So we have evidence 
Some people might look at radiometric dating as evidence against the veracity of the scripture. Another way of looking at it is we have evidence in radioactive decay of a God who actually created and holds together this universe and has the power to change the laws and rules of the universe. And so it finally comes down to the fact that we've got evidence uh, that can be interpreted in terms of an old earth or can be interpreted as a young earth with supernatural intervention. In my particular instance, I believe in the latter. I believe the Bible itself is, is God's word, it is his eyewitness testimony. He was there. It's his eyewitness testimony of what he did in the creation, what he did in the flood. And because it's the word from the God who cannot lie, I believe it's true. And so I'm, I interpret this uh, radiometric decay not as evidence of an old earth, but it's actually evidence of a God who's got the power to intervene and did intervene in the uh, uh, punishment and ultimately in the creation of human beings.